So welcome back to another Drum Electric video. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you've seen me before, if you are a subscriber, then welcome back. It's great to see your beautiful face. So today's subject is a subject that in the drum community and the musicians community is being widely talked about. If you're watching this video in the future, then welcome to a video back in the 2020 pandemic times. I'm talking about the whole thing of streaming. So if you're a music instructor or you're now working from home and may have a lot of spare time, not everyone does, but maybe you do. You're experimenting with the world of online streaming. I know I am as a tutor. I'm having to move all my lectures online and I so far I'd say it's going well. It's a very fun new experience. But the main important thing is that as drummers, especially with acoustic kits, that's not the easiest thing in the world. Now, bearing in mind, there's so many different factors that go into all of this. So for example, this very room that I'm talking to you in is a studio and I'm very, very lucky to have that. I have an acoustic set kit set up all the time. I can practice on it. Now I'm fully aware loads and loads of viewers will be watching from apartments where you have an electric kit that you might be able to play or you might not because your downstairs or upstairs neighbors don't like that thumping. Now there are workarounds for this, like the little risers to stop that pumping of the bass drum or you've got an external practice room that you can just about get to but for most of us it's now just a case of practice pad and hoping for the best which is totally fine that happens but in this video for those that do have the ability to stream drums and even play acoustic drums if you're lucky enough for that situation this is what we're looking at we're looking at how to stream that and actually potentially make an income or improve your current income to moving all of your students to the online basis like i said before as a tutor i've had to move all of my lessons online so i'm now teaching via an app called zoom by no means am i associated with them this is just the app that our institute has moved to so i'm most comfortable with it i also seen on various forums and stuff like that that loads of drum are now using zoom that sort of thing it's just really really popular i'm aware that there are a couple of reasons why people don't like it people do like it there's loads of options out there and everything i'm going to be talking about in this video can apply across the board just i'm going to be applying it to my own personal setup and within zoom just because that's what i'm using that's what i know loads of other people are using uh, and that's what i'm most comfortable with but like i said this can be applied through skype i know discord has its own video thing through youtube if you want to anything you're using this can pretty much be applied there'll just be some preferences that you'll need to work around with this with the fun fact of streaming across zoom and different things like that i've had to work out how to get that kit sounding beautiful on the internet it's not an easy feat especially with the parameters of zoom where there's a limit of how good the audio is going to sound and it's not the best so i'm doing a couple of videos this is the first part this is part one this is the most simple setup there's nothing particularly fancy about it it's just how to get good general audio from the kit and a good visual from here i'm going to do a more complicated setup where i'm actually going to use the mics through logic and routing it that way and then we're going to look at how to do a multi-cam setup which is what i use now to get really clear footage all the audio is coming through logic through all of my eq and things like that uh, to get quite nice sounding kits and i can switch between a talking mic and the mics behind the kit that's obviously the most complicated setup that includes multiple pieces of software uh, capture cards stuff like that stuff you don't need to worry about in this video like i said before this video is the basic setup so you can get a really good visual and some really tasty audio i'd also like to mention which is quite an important point that this is by no means the right way to do this this is just my way of doing it. So if you're one of my students watching this video, hi, this is how the behind the scenes, all the lessons you're watching me do, this is the behind the scenes of it. This is just the really basic setup of how maybe you can start getting into this. If there is a better method or something that I haven't mentioned that you're using, please comment it down below because that will be super helpful because I can learn from it too. So let's get into our basic setup. If you want to see the more complicated ones, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you know exactly when those videos are coming out. Okay, now we know what to expect. We're going for the basic setup. First things first is what do you actually need to get this set up? So this basic setup that I'm running will be on a 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro with touch bar. I believe it's the basic spec one. It's a very nice laptop and I know that not all of you will have this spec. This is just what I'm using. You do not need a Mac to run this. Like I said, this is just what I'm running. If you have a Windows, 
perfect. If you just have a laptop lying around, if you have a computer lying around, perfect. If it can work and run Zoom, you're good to go. So that's my Zoom front, that's the camera. And then for my audio, I'm just using a Zoom, funnily enough, different company, a Zoom H6, which is one of the fancier interfaces, which I'm fully aware of. Now, you don't need the H6 in the UK here. It's about 200 quid or so, which is quite steep, but I invested in this a while ago and I used it to record all my gigs or my inner feeds with the stereo out. And it's really really handy so if you've got the money if you want to invest in it please do you can use it for many many things but there are loads of alternatives from the zoom range to loads of other ones i think tascam do a bunch as well shaw and rode i think they've got some different options but what you're looking for with the h6 is that it's an audio interface as well and it's really really cool so that's what i'm using i'm using my mac for the laptop for zoom for the camera and then i'm just using zoom for the audio they're the two things that's it that's all we need it's relatively simple it's not the cheapest thing in the world but this is stuff that i've already got you may have the equivalent have an experiment have a little research find what's best for you and that won't break the bank so before we get into setting this up behind the kit and making it all beautiful and pretty and sounding nice there's a couple of settings that you need to change on zoom so we'll head over to a screen recording on my mac and i'll show you exactly what they are welcome to behind the desk it's very exciting behind here i know welcome to zoom it's a fun adventure if you haven't had time to experiment with it already but it does the job we need it to do. So like I said, there are a couple of settings that we need to change in the preferences to make the audio sound quite nice and good and so it doesn't hate us on stream. Now all you need to do is head over to preferences, you'll get this screen pop up. Uh, as you can see, everything's just system settings which we don't need to worry about yet. And later in the video, I'll show you what you need to do. For now, the first thing we want to do is there's a little check mark called enable stereo. All right, we want to just hit that, click that. It means that when the audio comes out and when you're listening as a student, it's in stereo, which is always really nice. Now, if you don't have the enable stereo setting, all you need to do is head to general, scroll down to the bottom and then the view more settings button. That'll open up Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using, and you'll get a whole list of settings that are on Zoom, all right? Have a play around with all of these because they're really good to know where they are and what they do, but there'll be one that says enable stereo sound, hit the on button for that, it'll be good to go. You can just leave Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using, come back to the app and that setting will be there. So back to the audio settings, we've enabled stereo sound. Again, that's completely optional really. If you want stereo sound, then by all means, if you don't, Carry on watching. From here, we need to hit the advanced button in the bottom right. So just hit advanced, you'll get this lovely screen up. Now these are really important features, okay? And I recommend turning this off for both yourself and your students. So it's, you've got suppress persistent background noise and suppress intermittent background noise. Now both of these need to be set to disable. I believe they're on auto straight away, but whatever setting they're on, turn them to disable. Basically what it does is it hears loud noises and reduces them, which is great until we're playing drums. It hears drums as a loud noise and takes them away. So as soon as you hit a drum, it goes and it sounds horrendous, you can't hear it. So by disabling them, all is good. So you'll want to do this for both yourself and your students or whoever's on the other end of your Zoom call. Automatically, these settings are turned on. You need to turn them off and make sure they're off the whole time for both you and your viewer. The other one, echo cancellation, you can just leave that. That's totally fine, that doesn't really do much. It's just there, it helps with the whole echo back and forth. If you can hear them, they can hear you. Stuff like that, don't worry about it too much. The first two though, they're the really important ones. Once you've done that, you can exit out of the settings all is hunky-dory there we can now head behind the kit and get this all set up so we are now behind the kit. I've got the Zoom recorder set up kind of where I want it to be. And I've also got my laptop next to me for the camera. Now, the Zoom is nothing special. I've kind of got it on its basic setup because this will be across the board on all of the Zoom recorders. Uh, this is obviously the H6, like I said earlier. The H4 has the same thing. There are a couple other models which you should absolutely check out, but I'm not too sure of those. But I've just got the XY mic set up because they produce a really nice sound. And there's a little gain switch on the top of them that I can use to change between having the kit sound and my voice. It does take a second, but it works really well because it sounds really good. These are also the XY mics that come stock with this. So you don't have to purchase anything more than just this recorder, which is even better. I then have the Zoom recorder connected to my Mac via USB because then this acts as a little audio interface and the Mac can pick it up as its own mic. It's really cool. I'll go through that in a sec though. Now this Zoom mic is then just connected to my Mac via USB as it's then used as an audio interface like 
like I said earlier, where the Mac will then use this as the microphone rather than the Mac mic, which is loads better. In order to do this, you've just got to plug the USB in. It will then come up automatically asking if you want to use it as a audio interface or the recorder. I choose the audio interface. Then I just choose a stereo mix because I don't need to have individual mixes of each one. I just need one from everything. And then it's just for PC and Mac because I'm using a Mac. That's it. It's all completely set up. It's a great time. That's that. You just leave that there. All you'll have to do then is adjust the gain accordingly for when you're playing the kit, which you'll see in a minute. The only downside to this is obviously it does take a second to adjust the gain because obviously the gain now is set to my voice. In a minute when I play the kit that obviously have to change completely. That's a much louder thing obviously. So that is the only downside. You do have to take a minute to adjust that but that's totally fine because it's live stream and that's all good. And with that the only other thing is I've got my Mac here next to me as you can see. I'm just using the FaceTime HD camera on it because it's a pretty decent webcam and it works well. We don't need anything fancy for now. That that's for a future video. Now, the last thing you need to do is head back onto preferences, onto Zoom. There you go, Zoom preferences. You'll get the lovely window coming up and then you just need to change the mic to the H6. That is it. Then it's your choice of changing your speaker to either the Mac. I tend to have mine in a little headphone extension coming up the side of the Mac or you can actually plug directly into the Zoom and control it from there. Like I said, I tend to do it with the Mac because it's a little easier to control. The buttons are a bit bigger, so I can just mash them when I want something louder or quieter. It's really important to note as well that once you've got all this set up, you'll want your Mac next to the kit or at least somewhere around it that you can both reach it and get a good angle on it. Now I've got a little rack set up here that has my audio interface and things like that, and I've deliberately put that next to my kit so I can reach it. Uh, the other option is take a music stand like this and put your Mac Mac on it or purchase something like that you can actually get actual laptop holders uh, and things like that or just stack a bunch of boxes whatever really works chairs are good too so that's pretty much it that sets up both the mic and the laptop you'll get pretty good visual from it and you'll get pretty good audio from it as well like i said this is just the basic mix it's nothing particularly fancy it's just so you can get really clear audio and visual for all the people watching so I'm going to switch this over to recording from Zoom. So you'll see exactly what this both looks like and sounds like as if you were watching one of my live streams. So I'll just switch over and I'll see you there. So here we are. Welcome to Zoom. As I said, it's very lovely and very glamorous. This is just the audio from the Zoom H6 that you can just about see in the corner here. Uh, and then the visual just from my FaceTime HD camera is just the webcam. Obviously, this is me talking. You can see that this is nothing glamorous in terms of view. You've got the kit that you can normally see, my collection of books, the SPD, the coffee machine, which is vitally important. But this is a view that I can talk to people if I want to and then just completely turn around and play the kit. So at that point, I can just turn down the camera so you can see the kit nice and easy scoot up, turn the gain down and play. So if I was demoing something, this is what it would look like. And then I can just turn around, adjust the camera again, natter away about something, and it works really, really well. Like I said, this is the basic setup. This is just using the FaceTime HD camera and the Zoom H6, which you can see in the corner just here. It works quite well. And like I said as well, this is a recording direct from Zoom. So you're watching this as if you were on a Zoom call with me and I chose to do this. I'll make this slightly more complicated in future videos by adding more camera angles. We've got a foot cam, a nice GoPro next to me here to make it look nicer. I've got my big light so it's a bit lighter in the room, but that works better when I've got the DSLR and the multicam setup. And that is pretty much it. That is this view on Zoom. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. It's a good time for everybody. And that is it. That's the nice simple methods to get really nice audio uh, and a really nice visual from just the Zoom H6 and then the Mac or your laptop of choice. Like I said before, make sure you hit that subscribe button to look out for part two and part three, the slightly more complicated setups. The videos where if you want to see an audio interface with the Zoom, with multiple cameras, 
keep your eyes out for that. If you have any questions about anything that happened in this video, or there's something that I've missed, or you've got a more efficient way of doing things, please comment it down below. I'd love to hear your setups. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing to teach online. If you've moved online, it'll be a great time for everybody. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for all of our shiny new videos, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>